Okay. Uh, this is a folk tale from Bengal about a king and a little tailor bird whose name is Tuntuni. This is a story that we've been hearing since our childhood and it is in the tradition of the grandmother states. So a little tailor bird had built her tiny nest on a people tree in the corner of the king's garden. The king's men had put out his golden coins to dry out in the sun because, you know, they were going rusty and musty because they were in the dungeon all the time and the king was not interested in sharing his coins with anyone. Anyway, so they had put that out to put them out to dry. And in the evening, when they were bringing it back, they left one coin there by mistake. And the little tailor bird, he saw something shiny and glittery and picked it up and put it in his nest. And he looked at it and he said, oh, I best reaches the king. I have a coin too. So next morning, he was feeling very happy. And he sat on the branch of the people tree and sang, I have what the king has. I have what the king has. And the king heard something and he asked his men, uh, what does the tailor bird say? Uh, oh, well, his majesty, uh, the tailor bird says uh, he has uh, what you have. Oh, really? He has what I have? Just go and find out what he has and just get it because he can't have what I have. And so the men went and they got the golden coin from the nest and brought it back to the palace. And just when they did that, and the king was feeling very happy, they heard the tailor bird sing. The king pines for money all the time, and so he has mine. Huh, that's a cheeky bird. <laughs> okay, just return the money to him. Give it to him, give it to him. So the men went and gave back the money to the tailor bird. As soon as they did that, guess what they heard the tailor bird say? The tailor bird said, Oh, the king is scared of Tony, and he gave me back my money. Because his name was Tony, you know. So he said, The king is scared of Tony, he gave me back my money. The king is scared of Tony. What is he saying now? Oh, well, His Majesty, uh, he's saying that, uh, you know, you're scared of uh, him and so you've given him what call? You know what? This afternoon, I am going to have a fried tailor bird for lunch. Just go and get him. So all the king's horses and all the king's men, they went and they got the tailor bird out of his nest and they gave it to the king and the king took hold of the bird and romped to the private chambers of his queen, his seven queens, and he said, I want the tailor bird fried for me for lunch today. And he walked out and the seven queens they had never seen such a beautiful they had a lovely bird. Ooh, 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 ooh. What a lovely give it to me, give it to me. And as they were doing that, and as the third queen was about to take it, the bird. on the palace floor. And the queen, first queen said, shh, no need to tell anyone. Let's fry that frog and give it to the king. And that's what they did. They de-skinned the frog and they marinated it with all kinds of spices and shh, they put it in the hot oil. And the king had a crispy frog for lunch, thinking, of course, that it was the tailor bird. And just then, when he was feeling very satisfied, the tailor bird sang again. 
A fried frog, a fried frog, the king had a fried frog, a fried. Oh no, now the king was livid. You know what? He called the executioner and he said, chop off the noses of those seven queens. I just can't take it anymore. And now I want to have that bird alive. And so all the king's horses and all the king's men, they went to the nest and cut the tailor bird and brought it back and gave it to the king. Oh, here, here's the tailor bird. And the king said, give me a glass of water. So someone got a glass of water and the king took a gulp of water and he plopped the bird into his mouth and then he burped and psh, the tailor bird flew off again. The king just couldn't take it anymore and what and he said, you know what, just go and get him again. I am going to do it this time. And so all the king's horses and all the king's men, they ran, ran, ran and got the tailor bird back again. And this time, the king made sure that the executioner was standing with a sword in front of him so that even if the bird came out accidentally, he could cut him into pieces and just kill it. So there stood the executioner with his sword and there sat the king and there came the tailor bird. And so the king took the tailor bird, cut the water again, plopped the tailor bird into his mouth and this time made sure to shut his mouth like this, cover his mouth like this so that the tailor bird wouldn't come out. And Tuntuni, the little tailor bird, was swirling and twirling in the king's stomach and going tumble, rumble, bumble. And then suddenly she couldn't take it anymore. She just went round and round and round and <laughs> came out again. And the king vomited everything that he had ever eaten. And the executioner now took his sword and just when he was about to cut the tailor bird into two halves, guess what happened? He actually caught, uh, cut off the king's nose. And then there was so much of bleeding and the doctors came and the king was, you know, aghast, frozen. Ah! And just when they were doing that, they heard the tailor bird saying, King, King, your nose is out of sight. It serves you right, it serves you right, it serves you right. Oh, King, King, oh, proud King, your nose is out of sight. It serves you right, it serves you right, it serves you right. And next morning, when all the king's horses and all the king's men went to find the tailor bird in the nest of the people tree, they found an empty nest.